Howdy and welcome to the 10 Week Bible Study. This is week seven, day four of our study of Joshua. I'm your host, Aaron Hibbs, and today we're talking about Joshua 17, 1 through 11. Welcome back to the 10 Week Bible Study. Again, I'm your host, Aaron Hibbs. Would you join me as we pray before we start today? Lord, would you open our eyes and our ears to hear what your word has to speak to us? Show us, God, what you have for us in your word today. Touch our hearts with the knowledge of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. With that, let's go ahead and jump into God's word. We're reading today from the NIV. This is Joshua 17, starting in verse 1. This was the allotment of the tribe of Manasseh as Joseph's firstborn. Machir, Manasseh's firstborn, the ancestor of the Gileadites, had received Gilead and Bashan because the Machirites were great soldiers. So this allotment was for the rest of the people of Manasseh, the clans of Abiazar, Helek, Azrael, Shechem, Hefer, and Shemida. These are the other male descendants of Manasseh, son of Joseph, by their clans. Now, Zelephilhad, son of Hefer, the son of Gilead, the son of Maker, the son of Manasseh, had no sons but only daughters, whose names were Mala, Noah, Hogla, Milcah, and Tirzah. They went to Eleazar the priest, Joshua son of Nun, and the leaders, and said, The Lord commanded Moses to give us an inheritance among our relatives. So Joshua gave them an inheritance along with the brothers of their father, according to the Lord's command. Manasseh's share consisted of ten tracts of land beside Gilead and Bashan east of the Jordan, because the daughters of the tribe of Manasseh received an inheritance among the sons. The land of Gilead belonged to the rest of the descendants of Manasseh. <clears throat> now here's an interesting story where the Lord actually, this is a dispute that arises before Moses dies, and because, you know, this person in the descendant, uh, descendancy of Manasseh, there's no sons and only daughters. They essentially said, hey, if you don't give the daughters any land, they're essentially cut off. And Moses is like, fine. Uh, what I, I, I like about this, I mean, I don't know that I want to read too much into this, <clears throat> but there are a lot of people that look at scripture and say, well, it's misogynistic and it's, it's male dominated and it puts women down. And all of that. And we've already seen, we've seen the, the daughter of Caleb has asked for land and she gets land. Um, these uh, descendants of Manasseh, these, these women, they ask for land and they're given land. And so I, I think, again, you don't want to read too much into it that it's not saying, but very clearly here, we can see this is that, you know, sometimes in scripture, it's not that... God hated women or looked down on women. It's just that he chose to assign these things based on male lineage. But when that was lacking, it's like, it's not a big deal that, okay, we can let the land pass to these women. That wasn't a big deal. Like they just did it. And here they come to remind them. And Josh was like, oh yeah, right. I, you know, forgot about that. Okay. It's yours. It's yours. No big deal. You know, kind of like we're done. Thank you for reminding us. And, and that's a settled matter Be because it's not that like women didn't have value or anything like that. It's like it's at some point, if you're going to administer something, you have to pick a way that you're going to do that. And it's through the male lineage that that's how the Lord, Moses and Joshua following his direction, chose to do that. There's any number of thousands of ways to do almost anything. Sometimes they're bad, but a lot of times it's like one way is not necessarily better than the other. And no matter how you do it, if you want to kind of zero in on one facet of how someone has decided to administer something, you can nitpick it apart and then you can assign uh, guilt and, and assume reasons, nefarious reasons for why that was done. And, you know, so people do that with the Bible say, well, look at this, you know, the, the Bible's misogynistic and God hates women. And that's just not even true. It's, it's, it's not in there. And uh, many times they'll point to things like the divisions of land and things like that. And, and here it is right in the absence of there being that prescribed male lineage, and you've only got daughters. It's like, Hey, 
will get cut off if you don't give it to a woman. Okay, no problem. Here it is. Um, and, and so it's not about assigning or taking away value from women. It's just about the way that it's administered. And, and so here we see a, a direct refutation to that idea that God hates women or that he looks down on women. This is a very popular idea amongst progressive Christians and non-Christians alike these days. I was, I was watching a, I saw a video the other day about a, a non-Christian essentially, I mean, maybe he's a Christian, maybe he claims to be a Christian. I don't know. I've, I've seen some of his things and, and he doesn't seem to be uh, a Christian a lot of times, but maybe he would consider himself to be one. Um, referencing the Bible for different things. And a reporter, an atheist reporter was taking him to task saying that him referencing the Bible in some of his lectures was damaging to women uh, because, you know, she was saying that the Bible is horribly misogynistic and damaging to women. Again, very common idea amongst uh, progressive uh, people, of progressive ideologies, either religious or political. And, um, and that's, it's not true. It doesn't mean that there aren't people in the Bible who may have behaved in misogynistic ways, but the Bible itself doesn't have some overarching misogynistic woman hating theme to it. And again, things like this are kind of proof of that. All right. Verse seven, the territory of Manasseh extended from Asher to Mikmathah east of Shechem. The boundary ran southward from there to include the people living at Entapua. Manasseh had the land of Tapua, but Tapua itself on the boundary of Manasseh belonged to the Ephraimites, in case you needed that to be any more complicated. Verse 9, then the boundary continued south to the Cana ravine. There were towns belonging to Ephraim lying among the towns of Manasseh, but the boundary of Manasseh was the northern side of the ravine and ended at the Mediterranean Sea. On the south side of the land belonged to Ephraim, on the north to Manasseh. The territory of Manasseh reached the Mediterranean Sea and bordered Asher on the north and Issachar on the east. Within Issachar and Asher, Manasseh also had Bethshan, Ibliam, and the people of Dor, Endor, Tanakh, and Megiddo, together with their surrounding settlements. The third in the list is Naphoth. All right. I want to jump to the map here real quick just to point this out. So we're being told that some of these cities, it's like Dor, is essentially here. And so this is where these things start to really get fuzzy is essentially it's kind of saying that like the territory of Asher should have extended here, but that several of the cities here actually belong to Manasseh, if that makes sense. So, so it's, it's almost like, so the way that this map is drawn, and again, I've used the biblical text, used a whole bunch of, I probably have looked at 30 different maps and they're all different and tried to draw something that I feel is, is good based on that. And I'm already seeing that I messed up on Ephraim. It should have extended here and here, somewhere in that range. But here, a lot of maps do give this little portion to Manasseh, even though what Scripture is telling us, it technically belongs to Asher, but all of the big cities inside that region uh, belonged to Manasseh. So some funky things going on there as far as how the land is divided up. All right. I hope these maps are helping. I think some of these maps, uh, maybe again, I'm giving them as the 50,000 foot view. So you can probably find other maps that are more accurate, um, or maybe not as challenged as mine, but I'm hoping this is at least giving you the 50,000 foot view of where all this is for the 10 week Bible study. I'm your host, Aaron Hibbs, and I can't wait to see you next time. Hey, thanks for watching the 10-week Bible study. If you've enjoyed this, would you consider doing that whole like and subscribe and bell thing you're always hearing people talk about? It really helps other people find out about the show, and my heart is for people to fall in love with God's Word. Thank you. Thank you.